Hello teachers! In celebration of fall break, I thought I'd put together 10 quick Google tips that you can begin to practice with if you have a, an opportunity over the next week. So, my top 10 tips for using Google Drive. First thing, number 10, creating folders. Number 9, using the search bar. Number 8, uploading files, flip charts, pictures, and anything else. Okay, I am in my Google Drive. So when I'm working in my Google Drive, the first thing we're going to talk about is creating folders because you're going to end up with a whole lot of documents and you can begin to put them into folders. To create folders, click on the New button, New Folder, and we, we can name it whatever we want. Um, Google Docs for Classroom. Click Create. Anything that goes in there, I can move things from folder to folder. I can just simply click on a document. And to move it into another folder, click on this folder at the top of that document. And it'll give me, it'll tell me where it is. And I can look down and find my folder I want to go in and move it. My next quick tip is uploading different files. So I'm going to select my folder. Now I'm going to go to New. And I can upload any kind of file I want. I can simply navigate anywhere in my computer. I can even go to Dropbox. I can even pull up a flip chart. And I can upload it. You'll see it's completed right down at the bottom. It is now in my Google folder. And one of my favorite features about Google is looking. Using the search bar to look you can see I have a whole lot of different documents. If I use my search bar at the top, I can simply type in anything I want. I can type in Paris, and Google will find any document I have or folder. For Paris, I can type in a person's name, such as John. And you can see I have any documents. So don't worry about organizing. You can always use the search bar. My next five activities for you to practice on Google Docs are sharing, adding a link, using a table, adding table of contents, and the research tool. These are all available within a single document. So now, how do we share a document and add tables, links, table of contents? Let's start by creating a new document. I can give it a title. I'm going to just call it Favorite Google Tools. So let's go ahead and review how do we share a document with another person. I have a document open. I go to my share button. And if I click on that, I can either share it by email by clicking on the link, or I can set specific people that will automatically be able to edit. Or we can go to the advanced. And there I can set, I can allow one person to edit and still another person can be set to view and you can give other different people different rights you, I can also prevent editors from changing 
or I can disable the options to download. So that's how we share. Tables. If you're going to do a shared document with students or other people, um, other teachers, and they all need a place to write, tables are a great way to do it. You use the table, and we insert a table as big as you want. And you can list the student name and the topic they will research. Now when students join this document, they can type their name here and they have a, a designated space. Another great trick is to add a link to another website that your collaborators can just follow. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the aurorak12.org website. I'm going to capture that link. I can add a link by highlighting a word. Click on insert a link. Paste that web page right in there. Hit apply. Now when my collaborators are on this page, they simply click link and they will go to the website. Another great feature is to have a table of contents for your meetings. So I can label this one October 9th, 2015. If I set that as heading one, if I know I'm going to have another meeting the following week, I can label that October 16th. I can also do the next one, October 23rd. Then above both of them, I can insert a table of contents that will allow me to jump directly to these. So I go to Insert, the very bottom, Table of Contents, and it will look for those headings. If I click on October 23rd, it'll bring my cursor there. If I click on October 9th, it'll jump clear down. You can see the cursor is right there. My next favorite tool is the research tool. The research tool is simply amazing. It is under tools. I click research and on the far right window you see it'll pop up. I can choose everything on Google, images, scholarly articles, quotes, definitions, and tables. So here are amazing synonyms. I can go straight there. Synonyms for amazing. I can look up other words such as Beethoven. I get images, articles that I can click and drag directly into my document. And if I look at the bottom, it is already cited for me. And my top two tricks and tips for working with Google is the read and write app and voice typing. Let me demonstrate those. Let me show you just a little bit about what the app read and write for Google will do. It's right here added on already. You can get it in the App Store and get it as an add-on. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you read and write for Google. So here is that URL, and I'm going to go ahead and put that link. It is free for teachers. And from here, I can read and write will read anything on the text. If I highlight some words, this is one of my favorite things, 
I can highlight October document uh, the word document uh, students let me highlight those three words if I click on picture dictionary a vocabulary list it will generate that for me and look at that with one one or two clicks I have a picture dictionary set up for my document I have October it gives me a picture a definition the word students definition and a picture and unfortunately document got split up but it would have given me document and I can turn that off and now let me show you my number one tip this week for Google Drive it's called text typing if I click on my tools or voice typing I select voice typing when I pick click to speak now Google will type the answers to my question as I read them period anything I say Google will type period this would allow students the opportunity to get their thoughts down on paper without having to worry about keyboarding period this gives you an opportunity to go back and teach the importance of revising and editing, period. So there you have my top 10 tips this week for working with Google. Thanks and have a great break.